Hey, I wanted to show you this product called Imagaro Z. Uh, this will be the first of several I'll be working on and we're just going to start with a simple graphic. This is PC or Mac based. I'm using a Mac right here and uh, I'm just going to convert it into vector format, a JPEG. And so the first thing I want to do, or even a TIFF, I'm going to just hit, click on File, choose Open, and I'm going to choose um, a TIFF file. It was just black and white image. Now when the file opens up, you can see over here on the left, you have the gray image. I'm just going to choose Process. Now I can brighten or darken this image. Now since it's just a simple straight black and white, I don't have to do anything, so I'm just going to accept it. Now when I choose Vectorize, it's going to go ahead and vector everything we see here. And I don't know how the accuracy is going to work just yet, so I'm just going to vector it as is. Okay. Now this gray background is the fill, it's the original file. To get that, you can see up here we have a view button. If we click on the view, we can see on the left hand side, view original is selected. So that's kind of what we want. If you don't see that next time, you can easily uh, find it and select it. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the bottom here. And you can see it's really rough. So I'm just going to hold that, click on that and hold in my shift key. And because of this graphic being real smooth, I don't need corners or lines. Uh, corners would you know, give you a nice sharp corner. Lines are going to give you uh, just straight lines uh, where straight lines would be necessary. And this accuracy, um, the, the least amount of points in vector is the lower the um, it's going to be the lower the res or the file size. So we're going to turn this accuracy all the way down just on these two elements here and we're going to revectorize the selected. Now you can see it's giving you nice smooth corners or curves but like in this area here it's really not true to the um, to the size or the file. That's okay though. What we're going to do is deselect and then we're going to choose this second button down here which is our node tool and just go ahead and select this element if I go in and choose this and delete it you can see that it uh, tried to emulate that curve and uh, that's okay it didn't do it but I can change that real quick too so I'm going to select this other one and just choose delete as well now we're just going to take this node as you see it Now I would I can add nodes and so forth if I felt that it, it was critical, um, but it's not critical because this is just a uh, this is actually going to be a tattoo, so uh, it's not critical that it's identical, but it's going to be close enough and that's all that matters. Okay, now to zoom out I would just click on the eyeglass tool and then choose views the entire page. Now you can see those two elements are pretty close to where they need to be. And if I wanted to zoom in on this side here, I could do the same thing. And uh, this time, though, I'm not going to change the accuracy that much. I'm going to reduce it, but not as drastic. Just go to like a negative 5, negative, yeah, it'll work. Revectorize the selected and just kind of see. Okay, now if I click on my node tool again and choose this element here, you can see that there's uh, several nodes. Now if I wanted to, I can just choose, let's say, a node here and hit delete and you can see it's going to automatically readjust that curve. And we're going to do this again and uh, that's pretty close, but I'm just going to uh, undo that because, oh, let's go back to our view here and zoom back in. I'm going to just come back in this area here and this side needs just a touch of work and I'm just going to delete this one here and add a nice little bit, little bit nicer curve. Now this we can you know extend. There's not a whole lot of touch up necessary. Uh, depends on your image. I mean this image here is a pretty clean simple image. And you can see this is kind of rough in this area. So we can select this here. And then we're just going to 
uh, change the accuracy here. Let's go to negative five. And let's go ahead and do that with these as well, and just kind of see where all of them land. That's pretty good. Now this one here, let's choose our node and just delete. Now it just depends on how critical you feel the artwork has to be. Um, we'll just undo that one. Okay. Now let's kind of zoom in in this area. Very problematic area here. So let's just create another negative five. Let's kind of look and see where it goes. Of course, you know, if you feel you wanted to select it all at one time and, and change them all to a, a very similar size, or negative five, for example, um, you could do that as well, and then just go back and change again. But for the most part, those work really well. Uh, this one here, let's just go to like a negative three. I don't want to lose too much in there. But I can go back in and uh, choose this node these nodes here and you can see it, it does a really good clean job All right. and you can see these green lines, I don't know if you can see that here, but wherever there's a green line that's a straight line So if I wanted to kind of make it a little curved, I'd just delete the, the node right where that line meets the red line. That way it's not so sharp. Undo that one. All right, so now what we want to do is go back into our view, and this time we can go uh, view fill. Let's go ahead and select these two elements here. And we're going to choose color. We're just going to choose a new color and make that red. Uh, so what we want to do is we can just uh, save as. And if we save as, it's going to save it as a Imagaro Z file. Or we can uh, file export. If we export it, we have several options. Uh, EPS, which would be an editable one. So that would be able to be opened in various programs. Uh, Adobe Illustrator, uh, again, uh, you know, industry standard and so forth. So I'm just going to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file. And we're just going to call this Crown. Alright. Now I'm going to open up Freehand. Since Freehand can convert files, uh, Illustrator files, we're just going to open up this, and now this is in freehand. If I go into keyline mode, you can see all my vector is there.